Hello everyone, thanks so much for stopping by the channel. I recently installed Buy Stuff Arcade's racing mod into my cabinet. Although it was awesome to have all these different driving games at my disposal, I was a bit envious at the Ridge Racer's cabinet being able to have the rumble feature inside the cabinet. Buy Stuff Arcade has been doing a phenomenal job lately, introducing new and exciting hardware and software to make these cabinets next level. When I had seen that they offered a plug and play rumble motor for the OutRun cabinet, I was really excited and I wanted to get this thing installed. The motor does need Buy Stuff Arcade's new updated encoder board to work. If you have previously installed the Racing Box mod, you probably have the encoder board 1.1 version. This will need to be upgraded to the 1.3 or the 1.4 encoder board. You definitely just can't update the firmware on the original board. The new hardware is needed for the motor to work. I also decided to update the SD card in the unit from the original 1.11 version software to version 1.12. This updated software should take care of some of the glitches and other minor issues the original one had. Well, that's enough talking about it, guys. Let's get to it. All right, guys, so first I'm going to take off the back cover here. If any of you have done the original mod, you already know the steps that's going to uh, be needed to change the encoder board. So, but in case uh, anybody hasn't done this mod at all and you're curious about what's involved, uh, then I'll just continue here. So after you take the back panel off, we're going to have to clean up a lot of the wiring that's in here right now, uh, especially to make room for the rumble motor. So especially this HDMI wire over there, that's going to have to be moved a little closer to the steering column. Um, because the uh, rumble motor is going to go really close to that to that uh, steering wheel column. You know, guys, um, if any of you have been wanting to do a mod on your arcade one up, uh, I, I would encourage you to do it. Don't be afraid to do it. Uh, you just have to take your time with these things. Uh, they, they're pretty easy to do if you just take your time and work your way through it. All right, so this is the encoder board. That's where the number is on the upper left hand corner there. You'll see the newer one here is a 1.4 encoder board. Uh, the original ones were 1.1 and 1.2. The newer boards for the rumble motor is a 1.3 or 1.4. That's the one you're going to need. What I'm doing right now is I'm marking each button uh, on the other side here. So when I take the wires out, I'll be able to know what's the start button, what's the power button and all that. So I don't have to keep flipping the uh, control panel over just to recheck what button is what. This way I could just pull the wires out and just look right on the tape there and know that that's the start button, that's the power button and uh, I don't have to do much thinking about anything. All right, so this is my original encoder board that was in there. I have the 1.2 board. And like I said, you'll either have the 1.1 or 1.2 if you originally did this mod. Uh, that's the ones that's gonna have to be changed out. Now here's something I absolutely love and it's very uh, convenient to have. These little magnetic trays. Uh, if you're gonna do any of these mods or you're gonna be using a lot of little screws, these are invaluable to have. You throw them in there and uh, the, the screws just hold really, really tight. If you knock these over, your screws won't go anywhere. And they collapse and open up like that. It's really convenient. I'll leave a link in the description for these. You get a whole bunch of them in, in a pack. All right, so now I'm going to mount the new encoder board. Um, one tip I'll give you with these encoder boards, they're really, really thin, so you want to be really careful with screwing these screws down on them. Um, you don't really want to crank down on these things too tight. You can wind up snapping these boards really, really easy. Uh, I really recommend using a handheld uh, screwdriver and not using a power drill on this, unless you're, of course, you're really, really brave. All right, so now I'm planning out my wire strategy here uh, for the best uh, areas to put them. This HDMI wire, this big thick one here, that's got to move up really, really close to that steering column there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie wrap it around the, uh, the legs here on the uh, mount of the steering column, the steering wheel column here. So I'm going to snug that up really, really tight next to that. So this way I have a lot of room to put that rumble motor because I want to put the rumble motor as close to the steering wheel column as I can possibly get it because you want to really feel that rumble next to the steering wheel. So in addition to tie wrapping the HDMI wire down, 
we want to be mindful of the other wires in the uh, unit now because now we're going to have a moving uh, piece of equipment in this control panel so we want to make sure that none of the wires are going to get caught up in that motor as it starts to spin so that's a really important thing to keep in mind all right so here is the rumble motor that is supplied by buy stuff arcades and it's a really really nice sized motor i was impressed by the uh the size of this motor when I seen it and now I'm using a uh, 3M double-sided tape and the reason why I decided to go with this is because these control uh, panels are made out of MDF and it's really not a great solid substrate to uh, screw anything down to and this motor is going to be shaking pretty good so I figured I um, back it up a little bit with the 3M tape this way it'll hold a little more securely if these control uh, panels were made out of solid wood then you definitely wouldn't need 3m the screws would do just fine but um, I definitely wanted to um, just have a little extra security with holding this down for the placement of this rumble motor I would recommend that you just center it right next to that steering wheel column and try and butt it up as close to that steering wheel column as you can because you definitely want the rumble to translate close to that steering wheel. If you put it too far to the right or down or anything like that, you just may not feel it uh, next to that steering wheel that well. So now I'm drilling some pilot holes. Um, so this way it's easier to screw the screw through that plastic laminate that's on the back side of that NDF. This is the part you want to be kind of careful with because you definitely don't want to drill all the way through to the front side of the control panel. All right, we're really getting close to the end now. This is another area where you just want to use a hand screwdriver to tighten this thing down. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using a power screwdriver unless, of course, you uh, want to throw caution to the wind and be adventurous. And now I'm going to put the wires all back into their appropriate ports. Uh, you want to take your time with this and make sure all the ones are in the correct ports because you definitely don't want to have to pull them all back out and redo it all over again. All right, so now we're closing in on the finish line. Here is the updated SD card with the new software on it. That is the version 1.12. I am taking out the version 1.11 right now. The SD card slot is on that gaming box right there. You just pop it out like you do in any kind of computer. The contacts go upward toward you. Um, it can only go, really go in one way. And uh, all you have to do is just push it in and uh, just make sure that it seats well. All right, so here we are. We're finally finishing up with the control deck. Uh, we're just going to have to screw that bottom panel back on and the only thing we'll have left to do is bring it back over to the cabinet itself and just make up all the hookups and uh, hopefully if everything went well we'll have a new updated outrun cabinet all right guys so this is it just have to put this back on and uh we should be pretty good i just have to get in the back and make the connections back there but Hopefully all will be well. All right, that's it. All right, so I'm just going to go in the back, make the connections, and I'll be right back with you guys. Hang on. All right, guys, so we're all buttoned up in the back, and now is the moment of truth. This is the part that always gives you a little bit of anxiety to make sure everything uh, went well and all your wiring is good, but we're going to do it together. So let's turn it on and see. Keeping the fingers crossed. Oh, marquee's on. That's good. Hey, there we go. Now it's booting up. That's a good sign. I think we got it, guys. I just got to make sure the sound and everything is good. 
Splash screen doesn't have any sound. It takes a little bit to boot up. This version 1.12. Up. Oh, there we go. Hey, that sounds pretty good. Actually, it sounds really good. Let's go into racing real quick because I want to check the rumble on this. Let's see, what could we go to? You know what? Let's go to Daytona. I'm pretty sure there's probably a rumble pack on that game. The sound actually sounds better than it did before. Uh, originally, it... I know I didn't explain this before, but originally I had a lot of crackling coming out of the speakers and everything. Uh, I, I kind of thought the speakers were shot on this, but it sounds much clearer now and much um, bassier than it did before. So I'm, I'm guessing maybe the software upgrade uh, or the uh, encoder card actually did something uh, beneficial for that. Because it definitely sounds different than it did before. And let's just start a quick game here just to test it. Oh yeah, the face shaker actually even sound, feels better. I can feel it much better than it did before. <clears throat> I couldn't even feel anything coming out of the face shaker before. Just hoping the rumble motor actually works well. Sounds awesome. Oh yeah, it's rumbling. Nice. Wow. That's shaking the whole cabinet. That's actually really cool. Check your that is actually shaking. I know it's hard to um, explain how good a rumble motor is just by talking, but I mean, I could really feel that entire front of that cabin is shaking. That is really incredible. That's crazy. And the sound is incredible. Wow, that is really, really something. I'm really impressed by that. That um, rumble motor is really, really strong. I didn't think it was going to um, transmit through the, the control deck as well as it is. Because the thickness of the control deck and everything, I just didn't think it was going to, um, you were going to be able to feel that as well as you do. But really, really good. All right, so what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to run this through its tests. Going to check out a lot of different games, especially some games that uh, had some issues with it and everything. I'm going to go through it and everything, and then uh, I'll come back and give you my final thoughts. So what are my final thoughts? I can honestly say that I have not been this satisfied with a modder upgrade as much as this. At first, I was a bit skeptical if the rumble motor was going to be felt through the thickness of the control panel as it would be inside the steering wheel. But the size of the motor is substantial as opposed to the smaller one inside the Ridge Racer steering wheel. You can without a doubt feel a great rumble when it fires off. Another issue I had originally was with the sound. I had purchased and installed the power amp with the bass shaker. Originally, I was not fully pleased with the setup. It seemed the bass shaker was not doing the job and the sound from the speakers were distorted, so much that it sounded as if the stock speakers were cracked or blown, which I pondered if the amp may have been too powerful and cracked the cabinet speakers. Thankfully, this turned out not to be the case. Now with the upgraded board and software, the sound is absolutely incredible. Incredible, clear with rich bass and a great thumping, shaker, and feeling. 
The upgrades also solved many handling issues with some of the games. Even though originally you could adjust the sensitivity on the steering wheel in the game, some of the steering physics were loose and wild. Now the handling is an absolute pleasure. I'm so pleased with this entire kit. Buy Stuff Arcades continues to excel in the products and service they provide, and I am sincerely thankful for their innovative upgrades and continued releases in the home arcade market. Now, before we end, I just wanted to say thank you to all my viewers and subscribers. All of you have been absolutely amazing, and I appreciate each and every one of you. If you haven't yet subscribed, please consider it. I would love to have you part of the awesome community that makes up this channel. Well, that's it, guys. That's the review. Jester Tester saying be well, happy gaming as always, and until the next review, I will see you.